In this exercise, I have a really fun one for us to do. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna walk through how we can line up arrays and combine arrays and map values inside of them with those other arrays. Now I know that sounds really abstract and so we're gonna walk through some very basic examples. So right here I have a set of headers. Now with these headers I have first base, second base, third base, shortstop, I have all the baseball positions in there. And then I have some other arrays with team members. I have Astros followed by Rangers. And now in the order, I have Guriel, who's a first baseman, which you can see lines up to that first header. Then I have Altuve, which is a second baseman. Bregman's a third baseman, so on and so forth, all the way down. And the same thing is true for Rangers. Now, this is a pretty common thing where you need to have collections, and then you need to be able to map the items inside of the collections. This is important in data science. It's important whenever you are wanting to perform any kind of array type of manipulation. And so if you simply merge these all together, there wouldn't be a clear process. One approach that we could take if we needed this kind of mapping is we could create a hash and then map all of that in, but there's actually a much easier way in Ruby. Let's come down to the test, test case because I have a base scenario here. So I created some test headers, first base, second base, and pitcher, and then I created a test team where we have first base player, second base player, and the pitcher. Now what the expectation is, is that if we run this method of position filter and we pass in test headers and then we passed in a test team as arguments, then the first item in there should equal first base and then first base player. So if we look at our example, so what we should end up with is actually one array that contains nine array elements. So we should have one array that says first base followed by Guriel followed by Fielder. Now the second array should be second base and Altuve and Andres. And then next one should be third base followed by Bregman and Odor. I am simply going through these, not because I feel like you need it, but just more so that you can kind of understand the pattern that's emerging. What we want to essentially do is create headers that have each one of the corresponding elements in the other arrays all lined up. So if I run this, so if I run the RSpec test for this, this is the 22nd we're gonna get a failure and it's just because we haven't implemented anything yet. I'm gonna switch back here and let's talk about some of our options. So technically we could do something like create a hash and then pass each one of the items in, combine them, and then we would have a hash with a set of key value pairs and then we could iterate over that and then create our array or our nested arrays that way. However, there's a much cleaner way of doing this. And to do this, we're gonna use something called the zip method in Ruby. The zip method starts with the first item, which are a set of headers. And that is, it doesn't have to be headers, it can just be whatever the first array is. In our case, it's headers. Then we call the zip method, and zip takes any number of array arguments. So here we can pass in Astros and we can pass in Rangers. And now if I save this and run it, you'll see that if we skip down that we have exactly what we're looking for. We have headers right here and we have nine arrays. We have the first array that has first base, Guriel, and Fielder. So it has the first column essentially of that of the three arrays. Then we have second base, Altuve, and Andres. We have each one of these, and if you go down the line, you'll see that these are all lined up perfectly. So this is exactly what we want. Now that's really easy. However, you don't always have the ability to do things such as hard coding values in. So right here, we're pasting in Astros and Rangers, but usually you're gonna be implementing this kind of thing using uh, Rails or some type of script, and you're not gonna know what your arguments are. So I'm gonna get rid of this, 
and let's come down into our method. So I have a method here called position filter. It takes two arguments. The first is the set of headers. So this is just our headers array. These are the headers that we want to fill in. The next thing it takes in is data and the data it takes in is a splat argument which means that this can be any number of items so this is going to work for whether we have Astros and Rangers or we have every baseball team in existence we can pass in all of these just like we would normally and it's still going to work so we don't have to hard code in any of those values so from here what we can do is start off the same way where I'm going to say headers dot zip but now this is where the subtle difference is because you may wonder can I just pass data in but if you do this you're going to end up with some kind of weird behavior so let's actually try this out and I'm going to do some real data the test won't pass and but I want to show you why so I'm going to call position filter and then here I'm going to pass in our headers and then I'm going to pass in the Astros and the Rangers. So if I save this and run the file, you're going to see if we skip down that we actually end up with some weird behavior here. We don't end up, we do end up with nine arrays, but they're not structured the way we want. Instead, we have first base having Guriel, Altuve, Bregman, Correa, Gaddis, Keuchel as everyone. So essentially, if you look at the data, what's happening here is that it's taking the header, it's taking the first item, and it's doing what it's supposed to. So zip is not the problem here. It's taking this, it says, okay, first base is the first item in that array. Then it looks at the second item, but instead of finding Guriel here, it's actually finding the entire Astros team and then it does the same thing on the rangers. That's why we're, we've ended up with all of these nested arrays, and then if you come all the way down, you can see that we have all of the other positions are all nil values, and that's the way zip works. If it goes down and it finds a column that doesn't have the right data it was looking for, it just gives it a nil, and that's why you see all of this here and the only positions that are taken up are first base and second base because that's the way it thinks that it worked. Now this is something that has a very easy fix, but if you've never done it before, it may not be the most intuitive. So we are using a splat argument here for data, which means that it can take any number of arguments. But what we also need to do is pass in a secondary splat argument. So zip is a method, just like position filter is a method. So what we're doing here is we're telling zip that what we're passing in is not actually an array, but or it's not just one data item, but it's an array of items. So when we're passing data in, now it's going to iterate through that entire collection and treat, it, treat them like elements instead of treating it like just one object. So if I hit save now and run this, let's skip down and you can see that now it's fixed and this is actually working. So we have first base, Guriel, Filder, then we have second base, Altuve, Andres, and everything is working perfectly. Now let's verify that our tests are working. So if I switch over, run our tests, you can see it's passing with one example and zero failures. So that is how you can utilize the zip method in order to line up and map fields with multiple arrays and how you can combine that with using the splat argument method inside a Ruby.